Refraction. When a ray of light is incident at the interface between two transparent media, part of the energy is reflected and part transmitted into the second medium. So we have an incident ray uh, from medium A, and you can see that uh, this, uh, but this is the ray A, that is the incident ray, that is reflected. We know the law of reflection says uh, this will be in a plane perpendicular to the reflecting surface and the angles will be the same. Angle of incidence and angle of reflectance, theta 1 and theta 1 prime will be equal. But if the uh, reflecting surface is glass, which is a transparent medium, we see that part of the energy will be transmitted into glass, making an angle theta 2 um, for the refracted beam, refracted ray, with respect to the normal of the surface. And we have uh, the uh, light, the speed of light V1 in medium 1, and which is air, and the speed of light is V2 in glass. And we, we see that when we go from air to glass, the speed of light decreases. So all rays and the normal lie in the same plane. So you can see that they're all perpendicular to the reflecting surface and the refracted ray is bent toward the normal. So this angle decreases and also the speed of uh, the light decreases when we go into glass. The transmitted ray is said to be refracted. So that's refraction. Its direction of propagation deviates from the incident ray radiation. As you can see, theta 2 is less than theta 1. Incident ray, reflected ray and refracted ray all lie in the same plane, which is the plane perpendicular to the surface. And if you look at sine of theta 2 divided by sine of theta 1, this is the angle of refraction divided by angle of incidence, sines of these two angles. This ratio is V2 over V1. Uh, and as you can see, because sine theta 2 is less than sine theta 1, uh, where theta 1 and theta 2 are less than 90 degrees, this is telling us that V2 will be less than V1. So theta 2 is the angle of refraction, V1 is the speed of light in medium 1, and V2 is the speed of light in medium 2. So medium 1 is air in this case, and medium 2 is glass. So this result is known as Snell's law. Okay, and the path of a light ray that gets refracted is reversible. So um, it's possible to trace it back. So if you have, if you send a light ray uh, from the glass into the air with the same uh, angle here, so if this ray hits the surface with the same angle, basically the refracted ray will be uh, in the reverse direction of ray A. So that's a reversible uh, path for the light. Okay. So why does the uh, speed of light decrease when it goes from air to glass? So that's what we would like to explain. Well, so when light is incident on atom A, it causes its electrons to oscillate up and down. So we have, uh, because Maxwell told us that light consists of electromagnetic waves, we have electrons in atom A that will respond to the uh, electric field component of the uh, electromagnetic wave, so they will oscillate up and down. Okay, the electrons re-radiate the beam of light towards atom B, so when they oscillate, that means we have a time-varying current, which means they will also emit electromagnetic waves which are traveling towards atom B, so that's re-radiation. Even though light travels from atom to atom at 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second, the speed of light in vacuum, the absorption and re-radiation processes take time, reducing the average speed of light. So light effectively slows down in a transparent medium. So when this electromagnetic wave is absorbed and re-radiated, and then absorbed, re-radiated, absorbed, re-radiated. So this absorption and re-radiation processes take time, so effectively they slow down the light in this medium. So light slows down in a transparent medium. <clears throat> we can quantify uh, this change in the speed of light 
uh, by using the concept of index of refraction. So this basically is a property of the transparent medium in which light travels. So we know that light travels at its maximum speed 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second in vacuum because there are no atoms to absorb and re-radiate. We define the index of refraction as the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. And V is less or equal to C, so we see that this index of refraction will be greater or equal to 1. So it is 1 in vacuum. So, and N is because it's the ratio of two speeds is a dimensionless uh, quantity. On the other hand, as light travels from one medium to another, its frequency does not change. Why does uh, the frequency not change? Because uh, we know that uh, from a Planck, uh, light consists of uh, energy packets called photons and they each have energy HF and conservation of energy at the boundaries tells us that the frequency cannot change. So if you look at uh, the speed of light, a frequency relationship, because the speed is equal to lambda divided by the period or lambda times the frequency. So the speed of light in medium 1 V1 is lambda 1 times F, the wavelength in medium 1 times F, and the speed of light in medium 2 is lambda 2 times F. So the F does not change because of conservation of energy. So if you look at the ratio, uh, v1 over v2, we see that it is lambda 1 over lambda 2. And v1 is uh, the speed of light in vacuum divided by index of refraction of medium 1, which was C divided by v1, remember, divided by C over n2, so it is n2 over n1. Okay, so uh, lambda 1 times n1 is equal to lambda 2 times n2. So you can see that uh, we have a change in the wavelength of light that is accompanying the change in the speed, but no change in the frequency. So for any medium uh, of index of refraction n, we can say uh, lambda in vacuum divided by lambda in that medium, uh, lambda n, is equal to n. Okay, so um, this basically you can see if n1 is 1, lambda 1 is lambda in vacuum. So lambda divided by lambda 2 is n2. So lambda divided by lambda n is an index of refraction for that uh, medium. Okay, so uh, we have seen that uh, the speed of light decreases when it goes from uh, medium 1 to medium 2. Since the frequency stays the same, the wavelength uh, should do the same. So light when entering a medium from vacuum slows down and its wavelength decreases also. So going back to Snell's law, sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 is V2 over V1, which is the speed of light in vacuum divided by index of refraction in medium 2 divided by C over N1. This is N1 over N2. So we reach N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. N2 sine theta 2 and 1 sine theta 1. That's Snell's law of refraction. Let's see an example. A light ray of wavelength 589 nanometers traveling through air is incident on a smooth flat slab of crown glass at an angle of 30 degrees to the normal. Find the angle of refraction, find the speed of light once it enters the glass, what is the wavelength of this light in glass. Okay, so we have angle of incidence theta 1, 30 degrees normal to the uh, to, with respect to the normal, and then we have angle of refraction, theta r, we go from air to glass. So let's start with part A. Uh, the index of refraction in air, we can say is approximately the index of refraction in vacuum. Not exactly, but uh, this is a good approximation. The index of refraction and 2 in a glass, so that's Ng, is approximately 1.52. This you can look up from uh, tables. Now, using Snell's law of refraction, we have N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 
2. So this is telling us that sine theta 2, which is the angle of refraction, that's sine theta r, is equal to um, n1 over n2, which is 1 over 1.52 uh, times sine 30, sine theta 1. So this gives us, for angle of refraction, theta r, 19.2 degrees. So that answers uh, part A of the uh, question. Now, let's look at part B. Find the speed of light once it enters the glass. Another way to write Snell's law is uh, the ratio of sine theta 2 to sine theta 1 is V2 over V1. So we can see that V2, the speed of light in glass, will be V1 times sine theta 2 over sine theta 1. Uh, so, or V2 is also equal to uh, the speed of light in vacuum divided by the index of refraction of glass. So, we could calculate it this way as well. So, using Snell's law of refraction, this would be 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second. That's the approximate speed of light in air <coughs> multiplied by uh, sine theta 2 over uh, sine theta 1 so uh, sine theta 2 would be sine theta r which is uh, sine 19.2 divided by sine 30 so we see that uh, v2 is equal to 1.97 so it decreases uh, 1.97 10 to 8 meters per second or we could just uh, divide the uh, speed of light in vacuum with the index of refraction of the glass which is 1.52 that's the definition of index of refraction and we would obtain the same answer so two alternative ways to calculate the speed of light in glass <clears throat> okay so um in part C, we would like to know uh, the wavelength of light in glass. Now, uh, the speed of light in glass is lambda 2 times f, the, its wavelength times f. And we also know that the speed of light in vacuum or air, approximately, is lambda times f. So we can say that the frequency is uh, the speed of light C divided by the uh, wavelength lambda in air so uh, we can substitute this for frequency into this relationship so we see that v2 is equal to uh, lambda 2 times f which is the speed of light in air or vacuum divided by uh, the wavelength of light in uh, air which is uh, lambda so we can see that uh, lambda 2 will be equal to lambda times v2 over c. So uh, this will be lambda times v2 over c. <clears throat> lambda in air was given to us as 589 nanometers. 589 nanometers multiplied with the new speed 1.97 10 to 8 meters per second divided by 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second, we see that the wavelength of light in glass will be reduced to uh, 38.7 nanometers. <clears throat> so this is probably um, 387 nanometers because we have a reduction by uh, 1.52, so it should be 387 
nanometers. That's the wavelength of light in uh, glass. All right. So um, another example, a light passing through a slab. A light beam passes from medium one to medium two with the later medium being a thick slab of material whose index of refraction is N2. Show that the beam emerging into medium 1 from the other side is parallel to the incident beam. So uh, medium 1, medium 2, and then we're back to medium 1. So we have the incoming wave making an angle theta 1 with respect to the normal, angle of refraction theta 2, and then this theta 2 will be equal to this angle theta 2 here, right? And then it will be uh, transmitted to medium 1 again with theta 3. The, ans the, the question is, is theta 1 equal to theta 3? So we can use uh, Snell's law uh, at the interface between medium 1 and medium 2. So n1 sine theta 1 must be equal to n2 sine theta 2 so we see that uh, sine theta 2 must be equal to n1 over n2 sine theta 1 n1 over n2 sine theta 1 and uh, n2 sine theta 2 for the second interface that is this interface here will be equal to n1 sine theta 3 uh, and this gives us because n2 sine theta 2 was equal to n1 sine theta 1 also uh, so we see that the sine theta 1 and sine theta 3 are the same so theta 1 must be equal to theta 3 therefore uh, this ray uh, that is transmitted back to medium 1 passing through medium 2 will be parallel to the incident beam so that is obvious if we double the thickness of the slab does the offset distance d double so what is offset distance here that is uh, you can see while these two beams are parallel to each other there is an offset distance d between the two so that's uh, that's the question so if we double the thickness of the slab, the thickness of the slab is, let's call it T, as you can see here. If we double this thickness, uh, you can see this triangle, uh, ABC triangle, will become ADE triangle. So we go from T to 2T, we double the thickness. And what will happen to this uh, distance D uh, when we do that? So from similar triangles, uh, we can observe from similar uh, triangles uh, the ratio D divided by X is AB divided by AD so this will be D divided by X is AB divided by AD. So um, if this thickness is doubled, so this is 90 degrees here, uh, we have the thickness of the slab. Uh, you can see that uh, we, we obtain AB equals uh, BD. So these are similar triangles. So uh, AB over AD is uh, T divided by 2T, which is also equal to D divided by X. So D divided by X is AC over AE or AB over AD from similar triangles. So that, that's equal to 1 over 2. So we obtain X is equal to 2D. Therefore, the answer is yes. If we double the thickness, the offset distance uh, will double. All right. Let's look at uh, how to measure index of refraction. Well, for this, we have the prism. 
the prism has uh, an incoming light. You can see it's refracted and it's refracted again when it goes back to the uh, original medium. So we have a total deviation in the angle uh, delta. We call this angle of deviation. The prism has an apex angle phi and the prism can be used to measure index of refraction. So whichever material we're interested in, we can make a prism out of it and do this experiment. And from this experiment, we can measure the index of refraction for that uh, medium. So let's see how uh, that works. Although we do not prove it here, the minimum angle of deviation, delta minimum, for a prism occurs when the angle of incidence, theta 1, theta 1 is this angle of incidence with respect to the normal of the interface, is such that the refracted ray inside the prism makes the same angle with the normal to the two uh, prism faces. So it comes out with the same angle, theta 1. That is the uh, minimum uh, that's for the condition for minimum angle of deviation that's shown in the figure. Obtain an expression for the index of refraction of the prism material in terms of the minimum angle of deviation and the apex angle phi. Okay, so let's take a look at this here. We come with angle theta 1 and uh, we go to uh, the prism and we, we now make an angle uh, theta 2 with respect to the normal to the prism. And because it comes out with the same angle theta 1 here, uh, you can see if, if we take the uh, midpoint here, this, is, this angle is uh, phi over 2. So we, we go with uh, this angle uh, theta 2 uh, and then we reach the other side and with incoming angle theta 2, we can have theta 1 as the uh, angle on the other side. The angle of incidence is such that the refracted ray makes the same angle with the normal. So that means this angle should be theta 1. While well, using Snell's law, that's only possible if this angle is also theta 2. So that makes this angle 180 minus 2 theta 2. And if you complete this triangle here, we have an isosceles triangle with the same angles. So we have alpha and alpha on the two sides. And so this is the incoming ray direction. This is the refracted ray direction, uh, the transmitted ray uh, direction. We have delta minimum, the minimum angle of deviation. So if we look at A, B, C, D. So we have an angle phi here, the apex angle, B and D are 90 degrees. Um, so on these two corners, we have 90 degrees. And the angle here is 180 minus 2 theta 2. OK, so let's read here. Phi 180 minus 2 theta 2 and 90 degrees on corner B and C. So we can write uh, 180 degrees minus 2 theta 2 plus uh, 180 degrees that is 90 plus 90 180 degrees plus phi is equal to 360 degrees so for this uh, four corner uh, shape so we have theta 2 is equal to phi over 2. So we obtain theta 2 must be equal to phi over 2. So we have found uh, that this angle is phi over 2. All right. And what is delta minimum? The minimum angle of deviation. That we can see here is alpha plus alpha 2 alpha is delta minimum. Right. Why? Because this angle is 180 minus 2 alpha, then delta minimum should be equal to 2 alpha. Alpha plus alpha equals 2 alpha. That's from EBD triangle. So EBD triangle uh, tells me that delta minimum is 2 alpha. And if I look at the corner B, theta 2 
minus alpha should be equal to theta 1 at point B. So let's see that. Uh, theta 2 plus alpha. So that, uh, that's basically adding up to theta 1. So it's the same angle here. Uh, so we can write uh, theta 1 equals theta 2 plus alpha, where theta 2 we have found to be phi over 2. So it is phi divided by 2. And for alpha, we can write a minimum angle of deviation divided by 2. So delta minimum divided by 2. So that is phi plus delta minimum over 2. Okay, now let's write Snell's law. Uh, 1 sine theta 1 is n2 sine theta 2. So Snell's law of refraction. 1 sine theta 1 coming from air, we reach n sine theta 2, index of refraction of the material. So index of refraction of the material is sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2. So we can write the index of refraction as um, sine of theta 1, which is phi plus delta minimum over 2. So uh, in terms of the apex angle, the minimum angle of deviation divided by 2 and divided by sine of theta 2. Theta 2 we have found to be phi over 2. So it is sine of phi over 2. So we obtain an expression for the index of refraction of the material. We know the apex angle. We can measure the minimum angle of deviation. And uh, from this, we can calculate the index of refraction of the material. So that's one way to measure the index of refraction of the uh, material. Okay, so uh, let's summarize what we said. Uh, we talked about refraction. Refraction occurs when a, a ray is incident from a, a one transparent medium to another transparent medium. Part of the energy is transmitted. Part of the energy is reflected. The reflected energy is uh, the reflected ray obeys the law of reflection. Theta one and theta one prime are the same. The refracted beam uh, is uh, comes closer to the uh, normal of the uh, surface if the uh, medium is uh, a heavy medium so if it's any medium other than air or vacuum uh, that that's, that will be the case and the speed of light will decrease so v2 will be less than v1 in this medium and Snell's law tells us that sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 is v2 over v1 uh, so Snell's law will be proven in an electromagnetism class Okay, so the path of the light ray is reversible. If we were to send light, uh, light ray with the same angle to the normal from glass to air, you would see that this angle would be equal to theta 1. Uh, the reason why the speed decreases when it enters the glass is because it takes time for the atoms uh, to absorb and re-radiate the electromagnetic waves while they're traveling with the same speed from atom to atom this causes an effective decrease in the speed the index of refraction measures uh, the change in the speed uh, when the light ray enters that medium in reference to air or vacuum so speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in medium is index of refraction which is dimensionless greater or equal to one uh, when light travels from one medium to another, its frequency doesn't change. That's due to conservation of energy e is equal to HF. Photon energy cannot change, but the wavelength decreases uh, accompanying the decrease in the speed because V is equal to lambda F. And we reach uh, Snell's law 
uh, in terms of index of refraction n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. We talked about one example uh, where we know the wavelength of light that is incident on a smooth surface. So this is a specular uh, reflection and refraction here. And making 30 degrees with the normal. First, we use Snell's law, law of refraction, uh, to calculate the angle of refraction. Then uh, we can use Snell's law of, in terms of the speed of light, sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 is V2 or V1, or we can use V2 is C over N2 uh, from the definition of index of refraction for glass. We obtain the speed and uh, the ratio uh, of the speeds uh, is equal to the ratio of the wavelengths, so we can use that information uh, to calculate the wavelength of light when it is when it enters the glass. And uh, we talked about light passing through a slab. Uh, we see that um, when it makes an angle theta one with respect to the normal, it will come out with the same angle uh, from the other side for the. Um, medium one to one uh, so we have we come from the same medium we reach the same medium uh, and we also have seen that the offset uh, will be determined by the thickness of the slab so if we double the thickness the offset distance between these two parallel rays will be doubled using similar triangles then we have seen a method to measure the index of refraction of a material. You build a prism out of it. You measure the minimum angle of deviation in the beam and the apex angle and the ratio of sine phi plus delta mean over 2 over sine phi over 2. We have shown gives us the index of refraction of the material. Uh, we can follow that here. Uh, we know that the minimum angle of deviation will occur when the angle of incidence theta 1 is such that the refracted ray inside the prism makes the same angle with the normal to the two prism faces. So theta 2 and theta 2. That means these two angles are the same. And using the geometrical arguments here, this angle is 180 minus 2 theta 2. We can write theta 2 in terms of phi and we can also write theta 1 in terms of uh, phi and delta min using this triangle and from this from these two pieces of information and using Snell's law we obtain the index of refraction for the material.